Hi everyone and warm greetings to our model editor. So today we group number 9 will be presenting a case on open banking in China, a case study of China's construction banking initiative. So firstly to begin with it, I will introduce myself. My name is Sangila Mo, bearing number 285 and I will be the first presenter for you all. Firstly, the overview of the case. The case revolves around the open banking initiatives undertaken by China Construction Bank CCB, especially its Shenzhen branch CCB asset in response to rise of big tech company and fintech firm in China's mobile payment market. The story begins with Ms. Angela Ji, the project leader at CCB asset, signing a contract with overseas Chinese town to provide touchless payment for car parks in Shenzhen. This project is part of CCB's overall strategy to pursue open banking and regain ground loss to technology giants like Tencent and Alibaba in retail banking sector. The concept of open banking which enables consumers to share their financial information securely and allows companies to offer innovations Innovative banking products was officially defined by the UK Competitors and Market Authority in 2016. In response to European Union's direction to protect consumers in online payments, open banking gained regulatory attention globally. In the US, Citibank spreadhead open banking with the City Developer Hub, while China's central bank, the People's Bank of China (PBOC). Encourage banks to adopt open banking strategies through its 13th five year development plan. However, in China, the mobile payment market was already dominated by big tech companies such as Alibaba, Alpay, and Tencent, which had paid before the PBOC regulation. These companies, known as BATJ, B2, Alibaba, Tencent, and Jingdong, rapidly gained market share by leveraging their large customer base and advanced technologies in big data, AI, and cloud computing. The success of Alipay and WeChat Pay was attributed to slow response of traditional bank in entering the ePay sector, as well as convenience and widespread adoption of mobile payment solution. Now the problems or issues. The problems or issue in the given case is the intense competition faced by incumbent banks, especially China Construction Bank CCB, in the rapid evolving open banking landscape in China, with the rise of big tech companies like Tencent and Alibaba, as well as their financial services subsidiary that traditional banks were losing market share and struggling to retain customers. The case describes how CCB recognized the trade possessed by this technology giants and formulated an open banking strategy as part of its overall business strategy. Open banking which involves sharing customer data and collaborating with third-party partners to provide innovative banking services was seen as potential solution for incumbent banks to regain their position in their retail banking sector. The challenges for CCB and other traditional banks was twofold. Firstly, they had to compete with big tech companies that already dominated the mobile payment market in China. Alipay from Alibaba and WeChat from Tencent had captured a significant market share, leveraging their established platform and user base. Secondly, incumbent banks faced regulatory challenges and compliance requirements that were not applicable to non-banking financial institutions, while the People's Bank of China PBOC encouraged banks to adopt open banking strategy and open up their APIs. Traditional bank had to ensure compliance with regulation and stringent identity verification process. This created additional hurdles for banks in competing with edge-line and less regulated fintech companies. Case details Open banking initiatives and competition in China. In December 2017, Ms. Jade and her team signed a contract with overseas Chinese town to provide touchless payment for all car parks in tourist and residential area in Shenzhen, China. This project was part of CCP assets strategy to pursue open banking and compete with technology giants like Tencent and Alibaba in the retail banking sectors. And on the, in China, the, the People's Bank of China. Encourage bank to develop open banking with People's Bank of China released a notice concerning the implementation of categorized management of personal bank account in 2016. Open banking competition in China. The mobile payment market in China was already dominated by Alipay from Alibaba and Future Pay from 
Jens and Swift, People's Bank of China regulations were introduced in 2016. RGP, FBJP, UK, Bessie, UK, Marcus, Swift, which made a 90% by 2015. Now, to continue with the presentation, I'll be talking about the case analysis. CCPR's open banking initiatives demonstrate its proactive approach to adapt to the changing banking landscape in China. By embracing open banking, the bank aimed to regain its competitive age against technology companies and fintech firms. The B2BC model allowed CCBS to leverage its existing relationships with large enterprise customers and government agencies to offer customized financial services to their customers. Second, CCBS focus on partnerships with popular and niche mobile apps and enable them to embed their services and tap into different customer segments. Third, the customer-based approach of CCBS was another key aspect of their open banking strategy by identifying customer needs and redesigning business processes accordingly, the bank was able to offer convenient and innovative financial services. To address the challenges faced by China Construction Bank and the open banking landscape and the increasing competition from technology companies such as Tencent and Alibaba, the following analysis of possible solutions are proposed. 1. Embrace open banking. CCB should continue to invest in open banking initiatives and embrace the concept of collaborating with third-party business partners. This approach will allow CCB to leverage the strengths of its partners' customer base and reach new customers. 2. Enhance mobile banking services. Given the dominance of mobile payment solutions like Alipay and WeChat Pay in China, CCB should focus on developing and improving its mobile banking services. This includes offering a user-friendly mobile app, enabling features such as quick loan approvals and money transfers, and providing value-added uh, services that cater to the needs of the mobile savvy customers. By offering a convenient and feature-rich mobile banking experience, CCB can attract and retain more customers. 3. Collaborate with tech companies. Instead of viewing technology companies as direct competitors, CCB should explore opportunities for collaboration by partnering with technology companies like Tencent and Alibaba. CCB can leverage their advanced technologies, customer base and market reach. This collaboration can be in the form of joint ventures, strategic alliances or API integrations, enabling CCB to con tap into the innovation and digital capabilities of these tech giants. 4. Focus on long-tail customers. CCB should recognize the potential of serving small to medium-sized enterprise and individual customers, often referred to as the long-tail customers. These customers, although individually less profitable, can collectively generate significant profits from CCB. Therefore, CCB should develop tailored financial products and services that cater to the specific needs of SMEs and individual customers. This could include <clears throat> customized loan offerings, investment products, and personalized financial advice. By implementing this strategy, CCB can foster a culture of innovation, leverage emerging technologies and collaborate with key stakeholders to drive continuous growth and maintain a competitive age in the open banking landscape. Lastly, I am Rajesh Mongar and I would like to take you uh, through the learning that we have acquired from the case as well as linking the case is uh, to the banking systems in Bhutan. So first of all, in Bhutan, there are various open banking activities undertaken by the financial institutions uh, as well as our central bank, the Royal Monetary Authority of Bhutan. These uh, initiatives and activities include, uh, first of all, it is Ethiru is a digital payment platform that was launched in Bhutan on April 6, 2020. It serves as a digital wallet allowing users to transfer cash into the integrated wallet through online banking or by depositing cash via authorized agents. Similar to a traditional wallet, Ethereu stores money for various its users to make payments at various establishments such as groceries, restaurants, pharmacies, taxis without the need of a physical cash. In addition, Bank of Bhutan has introduced uh, two new digital platforms, eLoan and GoBob, 
As a part of its open banking initiatives, this platform aims to provide uh, convenience and promote cashless transactions for the customers, as even for those who do not hold a BOB account. The introduction of these digital platforms is aimed at achieving a greater financial inclusion, promoting cashless transactions and bringing more citizens into the financial ecosystem. Um, another initiative is that Opal Banking also involves uh, that the launch of second phase of the rupee card in Bhutan is a, uh, as a cross-border payment initiative between uh, Bhutan and India. The rupee card is a low-cost digital payment solution aimed at providing a digital financial inclusion and facilitating the cross-border digital payments between the two countries. In addition, uh, Bhutan also launched the BHIM UPI and Bhutan became the first country to adapt the UPI standards for its QR deployment and the first country in the immediate neighboring to accept the mobile banking through the uh, BHIM app. So, uh, as in the case, PBOC played an important uh, role in regulating and the open banking initiatives and open banking activities taken by the construction banks in China. Similar to PBOC in China, the Royal Monetary Authority, the Central Bank of Bhutan, is implementing the open banking initiative through its regulatory sandbox. The sandbox serves as a secure testing environment for a new and the untested fintech idea. These initiatives are part of the Bhutan's effort to promote the financial technology adaption and enhance the access to the financial services. In addition, Royal Monetary Authority of Bhutan is actively pursuing the digital financing and the deployment of a modern payment and settlement system in the country. Here are some of the key points regarding the open banking and related initiatives in Bhutan. Feasibility study. The RMA is conducting a feasibility study on an international payment gateway and e-commerce platform. Second one is the international e-commerce platform that is, has been mentioned earlier. Third is the integration of the financial uh, switch. Fourth is the uh, migration to the go uh, global interchange for financial uh, transactions. The RMA has in Initiated the migration and implementation of the GIFT, which will replace the enhancing electronic fund transfer and clearing system. The RMA has authorized and regulated electronic money issuance to support the financial inclusion. Bhutan Telecom Limited has empowered to offer the wallet services through the B-Neutral uh, services targeting the unbanked population in the remote areas of the country. Thank you for